have you ever wondered what is the most important move in all of fighting games? Probably not, right? It's a bit of a weird and seemingly unimportant question. When we talk about things like that, we tend to focus on something more specific and practical. Like some powerful attacks that change entire matchups or useless special moves that make the character drop a few tiers. But if you had to name the most important move, what would it be and how would you even define it? Their legacy could certainly be a factor. Street Fighter 1 came out in 1987. That game had a Dragon Punch and a Fireball. Nearly every single game since had used those moves or their functions as the basic building blocks for their own systems. Even in a 3D game like Tekken, the Dragon Punch is tied to what I'd say is the most iconic attack in the series. However, I feel like this perspective leans just a little bit too much towards history. Another way to look at it is through the lens of game design. To examine how vital the move is for the game to even function as a fighting game. To enable all the complex mechanics and elaborate characters that surround it. For this reason, I think the most important move is just this. It might seem lame or silly, but I hope I can offer you a good reason as to why your basic jab is so incredibly important. But before we get into it, please consider supporting us by subbing, clicking the like button, or even leaving a comment if you end up enjoying the video. Thank you. For starters, let's look at the jab not as a specific attack, but as a general category of moves. What sort of properties and usages they typically have? For the former, two things immediately come to mind, range and speed. Jabs are usually the fastest moves you can do, often coming out within just a few frames. In virtually every fighting game out there, jabs or other forms of light attacks are the fastest offensive moves you can do. To compensate for that, they typically don't go all that far and the damage is usually negligible. In games where to win the health must be reduced to zero, the impact is usually measured in damage. As such, jabs are also granted the relative safety. They are either not punishable or even plus on block, and their speedy recovery means that whiffing them does not put you in danger. They represent both the lowest risk and the lowest reward, in a genre where you constantly have to weigh one against the other. Their properties might paint jabs as truly insignificant, but that should change when we look at the usage, because it's a real Swiss army knife of fighting games. On attack, it can be your basic combo starter that leads to something else. It often enables more complex routes and combos, since its speed can allow you to catch falling opponents and cancel into something else, pick them up off the ground, or extend your wall carry. The aforementioned speed also makes them irreplaceable on defense. Crouch Jab is a sacred move for every Tekken player, and in something like Street Fighter, if your character doesn't have a good reversal, the jab is all they can rely on. It gets to a point that if your character's jab is just one frame slower than the default, their defense is significantly worse. The last major example is a hybrid of the two, and is personally the most interesting one, since it has strong ties to real-life martial arts. While jabs make for mediocre pokes due to their lack of damage, they are fantastic for checking your opponent. The jab check is a fundamental part of mind games and pressure. Just as a solid outboxer would use the reach and speed of their jab to control the fight and condition their opponent, so do fighting game players use it to keep the aggressive opponents in check and stop them from initiating their own offense. Now that we have all these elements in mind, we can talk about why they make jabs so important. When you look at all the building blocks that make up jabs, you will see that they represent a sort of extreme. Outside of some character-specific things, the jabs are the shortest and fastest moves. That's an extreme that everything else has to be designed around. The speed of jabs by itself creates a hard divide between what is or isn't punishable. This alone has all sorts of stacking effects. Since jab punishes have to be the least damaging ones, it dictates what sort of scaling and routes are available from jab strings and combos. It also means that slower moves need to be more rewarding, more damaging, and open up more options. From the standpoint of individual moves, their speed and range also serve as an important reference. If a move is slow, it needs to have enough range not to be nullified by jabs. 
At the same time, if the move is faster than the jabs, it needs some sort of trade-off. For example, Yoshimitsu's flash is 4 frames faster, but it only hits at point-blank range and can be whiff punished if used wrong. Throws in Guilty Gear x are instant but also require being right in your opponent's face. This knock-on effect is what, in my opinion, makes them the most important move in all of fighting games. The innate qualities of a jab often tell you what sort of approach the game is going for overall. Because it's more than just an attack, it's a concept, and it's a fundamental building block that helps to define the bigger picture. And that's partly the takeaway here. If you take a closer look at the properties and try to understand the intent behind them, rather than the relative strength of the move, you might get a glimpse of what the game designers wanted to achieve. It's a useful perspective to keep in mind for anyone who seeks to get better at fighting games, or anyone who seeks to understand their favorite genre on a deeper level. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and see you next time!